We're back. This is Snowman Wealth Advisors. I'm Darren Blonsky. I'm Chris Sipes. And Chris, it's my favorite part of the week where we get to talk all about the charts. None of that economic charts, just the stock market charts. And Bitcoin, of course. So you're going to put your phone on silent, right? We can yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. And you're going to turn this terrible music off, right? <laughs> you don't like my intro music? Okay, just kidding. Oh, All right, much so better. We, we started off. We'll start off better than with our, our funky music. Here we go. All right, Chris, lots of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, lots of action in the market this week, lots happening. Uh, so we're going to dive into the charts before I uh, go into nerd land on these charts. Though, what's the top three things you're thinking about as we wrap up this week? Okay. So the week in general, we had massive, massive volatility in, in some of the biggest names in the market. So Facebook down 26% yesterday. We're talking about a company that's got a market cap of around a trillion dollars prior to that. I mean, this isn't like a penny stock. This isn't a small cap stock trading that way. Then you had Amazon down, I don't know, what was it? 10, 12% yesterday, up 10, 12%. We got Bitcoin uh, jumping up. So uh, a lot of volatility in some, in some big names. That's number one. Number two would be the jump in interest rates so we got a big job numbers uh re revision of prior months and and then this one was much higher than expected and you just saw rates go through the roof meaning that basically people are saying okay job market's stronger than what we expected fed's probably not going to come in and ease rates and they're going to have to continue to keep the 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 pedal on the metal in terms of tightening uh, monetary policy. So you saw rates just go up and bonds got slaughtered today. So let's take a look at the charts, but we're going to start with the heat map. All right. So this is the one week performance. So what you're looking at here is the S and P 500. Uh, now it wasn't a bad week. I mean, look at the, a lot of green in general in the market, but look at Facebook for the week down 19%. I mean, that's a significant drop. Now, one of the things about Facebook, and so I dug into the earnings a little bit and looked at what was going on with Facebook and why it's getting absolutely just slaughtered. Uh, and what it really comes down to is Facebook is putting everything into this metaverse idea. And for those who don't know what the metaverse is, it's kind of this idea that we're all going to put goggles on and explore our um, around a, a virtual world. Um, maybe that's going to happen. Maybe it won't. I don't know, but that's a big bet. And this company's making a huge bet on that. And the market just punished it for that bet. Um, frankly, I'm not a fan of Zuck, so I'm okay with that. Other than the fact that it's painful to watch a stock like this sell off when it has such a big portion of the overall indexes. Um, now you can see on this heat map, what it represents is the S and P 500 and the S and P 500 is the largest U S based stocks. And, um, the bigger companies get more, um, they're larger caps. So the Microsoft's, the Apple's, the Google, Facebook's, Amazon's Tesla's have more impact on the market when they do sell off or go up. And all in all, it was a pretty good week other than Facebook and PayPal just got crushed, um, as well. So. Uh, interesting week uh, there. Um, I'm going to dive into the charts. Chris, did you have anything you want to add on the, the heat map? No, I, I I just wonder if Facebook started sending you ads about how to short Facebook stock after you started searching that. <laughs> probably not. They probably like <laughs> filter that one out. <laughs> Interested in shorting Facebook? Well, we've got a deal for you. <laughs> At least we find our financial junk jokes funny. <laughs> um, yes. All right. So now we're going to take a look at SPY, right? So the S&P 500, this is the largest U.S. based index like I just talked about. So you saw the heat map. Now this is 
the candlestick chart. So each one of these candles represents a day in the market. Now I'm going to just um, hide a lot of the noise for a minute um, so that you can kind of see this clear. So what I wanted to do first is to show everybody something called fib retracement lines. Now, those who've watched us for a while know I like fib retracement lines because they help give us a sense where we might see support and resistance. And the um, support um, that we're looking for, so that's when the market trades down and where buyers step back in, sellers ease up, and then uh, resistance is where people start selling again. So you can see this was the all-time high that uh, let's see, was back on January 4th. We closed that candle out. And then since then, now we've traded down since January 4th. So rather challenging month in the market um, for people who pay too much attention to it. 12% um, down, 12.31% down in the S&P 500. And then you get these kind of bounces back up. And sometimes when these bounces come up, they go up and they run out of steam. And so interestingly enough, this particular bounce that we just saw, this move that just got completed two days ago was right into the 61.8% retracement line. Now, what's so interesting about this is you can draw these FIB lines and place those on the charts and then the market will tend to respect them because there's enough people looking at them. And we bounced right into the 61.8% retracement line and then sold off. That in, on its face is not so great. Why? Because it's just telling you that maybe uh, it's wearing thin the bounce. What we want to look for, though, is this continued push up against that 61.8 to move higher. Now, I was watching the close really closely today, and you can see this candlestick here was right at the 50% retracement line. That's not a fib line. It's just a retracement line. So this is half of the move down since the 4th of January, bounce up and over. And I really wanted to see where this candlestick closed and whether or not it would close right up over that 50% retracement. It didn't. It failed. So I'd say on the face, we have to take that um, as a little bearish. Now, then I want to look at and say, okay, what happens on the weekly close? Let's look at the 10-minute chart. And... Chris, what's my favorite saying about smart money and dumb money? Dumb money trades in the morning and smart money trades in the afternoon. That's right. And so we look at what happened. Market opens up, it goes up, and then the market sells off at the end of the day. So that on space is just telling you that a lot of the big institutions wanted to go into uh, the weekend being shorter on positions. But hey, if you feel like you ever try to tell me there's there's accidents in the market, look at this candlestick right here um, from 7.10 this morning. It trades up, sells back down, goes down. Look where we closed the market up today. Wow. I mean, right on, right on a pinpoint. So somebody's algo was completely working that one today. And so that's what I mean by the big institutions. Their algos are the the things that um, drive a lot of the trading and movement. In you the know what, too, if you, you zoom out just a bit and you look at that bottom uh, or, or kind of the, the main sell off there on, you know, January 25th or 26th, 26 ish. And you look at the RSI, we were, we were oversold on the RSI. And now uh, even though we've, we've sold, kind of sold off again, we're right in the mid range on the RSI. We're no longer oversold. So, um, that just increases the probabilities that we could see more downside, right? Um, or upside. It's no longer oversold or overbought is the point. And so that's usually when you're going to see a snap back in the other direction, which is exactly what, what we saw. Well, and so you see why it traded down into that point. And why is this top of this candlestick of that wick right there so important? Look at this double bottom right here. You got a double bottom. And then you've got this neckline. And so basically you have that double bottom happen. It breaks up and it retests the neckline right there and did hold. So I'd say that's a little bit bullish, but definitely it's kind of a neutral, I would say neutral to bearish stance at this point is kind of the way I'm looking at the market. Not quite strong enough, but certainly a more constructive week um, that maybe we're going to see a little bit of movement and bounce out of the hole here. And you can see that happening in Another just real basic way to look at the chart. And the question is always, 
are we making higher highs or lower lows? Well, it just depends on the time frame you're looking at, right? So you can see these low these lows are getting higher ish, and then this kind of ugliness here. But then if we back on out and let's go look at the four hour chart, and what now what we're looking at is the closing prices, right? So there's a big argument, you know, is it the is it the closing price or the wick that matters most? And I don't know, it just depends. And a lot most people say we'll just be consistent one way or the other because there's no hard or fast rule. And the wick is this piece that just goes down here. Um, and looking, I mean, if you look at overall, like you say, Justin, it is overall we're headed up, right? So we got higher lows happening generally in the market. And I think that's bullish. Although the fact that it went into the 61.8 and found weakness, I'm not in the camp yet of where I would say risk on. Um, I think we have to be a little posturing for uh, protective of portfolios at this point, because historically, when we start a downtrend, you get this down, this bounce to 61.8, and it continues bouncing down um, that way. So you could argue that we now have a downtrend confirmed, given that it didn't clear at 61.8, although we did see some strength here holding that other FIB line. So it's trying to figure it out. It's kind of in the middle. I'm bearish to neutral right now. Um, yeah, and I think you know the re the fact that we started out kind of talking about the tech stocks, and I'm sure we'll jump into the Nasdaq as well, where the Nasdaq chart looks a little uglier. And the reason why you kind of look at those things is because they make up somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of the overall S and P index. So when you're looking at the overall market, really those those handful of companies that are dominating the Nasdaq. Uh, which a lot of them reported this week, you know, you had Facebook and you had uh, Google just knocked it out of the park. Apple knocked it out of the park. Uh, right. So, but yet the overall index is struggling. And so that's going to drag down the S and P and, and be a major headwind for it uh, because it makes up su such a huge portion of that index. And you to Justin uh, just put in the comments, his points well taken. He says, Hey, look at the double bottom on the nasdaq and you can see that there's your double bottom there there's the neckline and then we tested back into the neckline and closed up very close and held that so i'd say that's at least something constructive to see on the cues i wouldn't say that that was a break of the neckline and we just ripped higher though um and we're still you know if you step back and look at kind of on the daily chart and then we say okay well let's use those same fib lines that we were running um, right out of the, um, like we were in the S and P and there's your, your fib lines and there's the move. You can see we traded right up and near into that 50% retracement and then bounced down. So it didn't even make it up to the 61.8, like the S and P made it up. So I think that's something to take note of general weakness. It, it could mean though, that we're just still continuing to work through a change of the guard when we talk about value versus growth. Growth stocks have done very, very well over the last three years and value has gotten just absolutely crushed. So it might be we're still three years. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three years. Feels like a lot longer than that. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we're working on a breakout here and, and the value stocks take over and start doing well. Um, I think we always have to look at the dollar. We always have to start our weekly analysis. Um, the um, when we're at um, looking at the currency index, this is the dollar weighted against the other indexes, and uh, the euro saw some real strength this week, which then sent the dollar down. And so I think that's you know quite the reversal there move. Uh, maybe still consolidating uh, sideways, but this dollar really has a headwind for the overall market. So it helped the market this week that we got weakness in the dollar. Um, then let's take a look at copper. Copper is just consolidating sideways. Nothing, um, I would say overly concerning there. It did last week was dipping down, but what I will say is overall copper's winding up for a move. And I think that's my general read on the market that the risk of a tailwind event is building and it could be to the upside. It could be to the downside, but it's kind of like the market's trying to figure this out depending on how the fed plays it. 
and we both know the Fed has a long history of playing it not in the favor of the market. So we'll see how that um, pans out. Take a look at our lumber to gold ratio. This can be a predictor of risk off. Uh, and some turning around here where lumber is getting stronger. It can be an early economic signal. Um, so that's positive. VIX uh, closing above the 20. I don't love that. Didn't drop below the 20, but quite a bit of settling compared to last week. More volatility in the bond markets. And I think that's really the eye lifter for me this week, Chris, is, you know, we got this volatility in the bond market. And then we look at HYG and which is the high yield corporate bonds. That's an ugly yeah. chart. <laughs> Very ugly. Yeah. And, and because that's kind of that riskier bond, uh, riskier part of the bond market, that's going to be more sensitive than, say, like a high quality, uh, low credit risk type of bond. The, these are the high credit risk bonds, right? And so they're they're closer to equities. They they definitely have more volatility. Um, they're further out on the capital structure, and so yeah, not not a great look on that. And we've had a pretty good sell off in bonds today with rates up as much as they were. And then we've got the um, the the investment grade core bond. So these are even the, the better bonds, right? And they don't look good either. Um, so that's meaning people just aren't wanting to touch debt, right? They're feeling negative about debt. Then we always look at our, our, um, our yield curve. Um, actually, let's go up to the 10-year or the two-year, and we're looking at 63 basis points. Again, a zero curve could uh, illustrate to us that we have a, a recession within the next year, give or take 14 months of that 10-year um, rolling over to the – or the 10-year rolling over to the two-year I mean, you have a flattening of a curve. Um, so that's something we're watching. It usually historically hasn't gone this low and not continued on down. Um, you know, this time could only, be different, though. We only have, uh, I think, around 33 basis points in the 10 to 30s. So it's even flatter on the long end, which, uh, you know, there's not a lot of room for error, right? There isn't. There isn't. And... I think that's the the nerve wracking part of the market is that the Fed is known for making error and there's not a lot of room for error. Right. Um, let's take a look at yeah. Dow Jones transportation. That's a leading indicator. Um, looks like we got a little bit of a reprieve on the Dow, Dow Jones transportation. Although, um, you know, let's, let's go back to the fib lines on this move here. And uh, you can see pretty much a rejection right in the 61.8 area and then moved down pretty considerably. I'd say that's weakness on its face. That could be confirming downtrend. Want to watch that very closely next week. Could be a relief rally this week is kind of how I'm reading it, but not necessarily changing course. Um, IWM, same story, uh, but there's nothing to say about IWM other than get out below. I don't like I just don't see strength here yet. Um, so I'd watch that one very carefully. Um, you know, we're below all our moving averages. I even put the exponential moving at 20 period moving average to see if it was doing better, but it still hadn't been able to reclaim that. And you can see got rejected right off the 20 and 20 exponential. Well, the exponential is a little bit more sensitive than the 20 period moving average. Then we take you a look know, at some, uh, just want to mention while you're on the IWM chart, uh, listening to Michael Guyad yesterday. And he said, you know, most most markets have been in a bear market since uh, late last uh, uh, winter to early spring, right? So, and IWM is one of them. Really, we saw the top out in March, April, and uh, since then, it really traded sideways to down. So, a lot of markets have already been in you know correction like territory um, for quite a while now. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one, and I'm going to show that on the Bitcoin chart here in a minute. I think that's one of the conclusions that's kind of starting to crystallize more in my mind is that we've actually been correcting since last February. You know, yeah, and, exactly. and that's that's a significant trade sideways correction. This might be the the tail end of the capitulation. It's February right now, so that means it was exactly a year ago. Exactly a year. <laughs> the, uh, and then we look at SMH, the semiconductor. You can see here, again, same story. Um, I do like we did hold our 200 period moving average again today. I think that's positive. Uh, but it's just sitting there. And the longer the market hangs out here, 
the more likely it is we're going to lose this spot. Ideally, you want to see markets move into the moving averages and bounce off. That means there's a lot of buyers just sitting right there and then it just gets bought up. But if it bounces up and then just kind of hangs out here, it means the buyers just aren't that convicted and that could spell trouble for the rest of the market, uh, especially when it moves down as quick as it does. Um, so then let's take a look at the three thirty year. We talked a little bit about this. You can see rates moving up today. Uh, 2.21 right now um, looks like it's going to break out of the double bottom on the 30 year rate, which could mean we've got higher rates to come, which makes sense with the jobs report that came out today was something like 424,000 jobs were created last month. Uh, it's a pretty significant move compared to the day. Remember the days of COVID when it was like nothing on that report. Right. Right. Yeah. We, we got surprised for this report, but also the revisions of previous reports was much, much higher than expected, uh, even despite COVID. Right. Right. The Omicron. The Omicron, the deadly Omicron. The Omicron. What's so interesting about it is the White House came out all week and was like, hey, you know, jobs aren't going to look great. And they, they have the people out talking and then it was a great report. Just interesting but i'm not sure what they were trying to play um <laughs> they probably aren't either <laughs> yeah I know. That's true. That's true. we give them way too much credit that's what i said to a friend yeah. earlier i'm like you give them way too much credit like who, yeah. who's the same they they're on they're existing on this orbiting ball of chaos we all exist in who's to say they know how to actually pull triggers and push buttons right right exactly Bit, pretty significant breakdown in bonds though, Chris. I mean, look at that drop below that important support level this week. Yeah. You know, this, this period has been with when you had stocks down and you have bonds down now, of course, bonds have not moved. They, they don't have the same volatility in general that stocks do, but usually investors expect bonds to be kind of an offset to stocks. That's a big reason why you keep them in a portfolio um and in normal times they usually offset stocks to some extent you know and uh over the last few weeks that's not been the case because we've had rising rates which has sent bonds uh prices down uh and we've also had a sell off in stocks so it's it's been kind of a weird time uh in, in the markets from that perspective and you can kind of see this consolidation area that the bond market's traded into and now it's just hanging out right in that area. Uh, but if it rates keep going up, not much support, you know, things start going down for the bond market pretty quick. Be interesting if we end up where we were at COVID, but without even, you know, with no but like major event. Like, like we've talked about many times before though, when you've got the biggest borrowers in the history of borrowers in human history, uh, being the, the U S government and other governments around the world, can they really let rates get much higher? I, I mean, my, my thesis has always been, no, I think it's just foolish right. to think they can. Yeah. I, I mean, I, th I think betting, betting that rates continue to go higher when they're the biggest borrowers and, the finances probably are not going to allow for it. Um, you know, it just, it seems to me like there's going to be a natural uh, floor or a natural ceiling on how high those rates can go. Yeah. Interesting too, looking at gold, because, you know, you would think that with the jobs report coming out today, inflation ripping inflation is an issue. You would think gold would do better, but it's just hasn't really been able to, get it going yet um i wonder you know is that because of bitcoin what's it what's causing this and um it, it's quite the debate right now but you look at it even with that jobs report gold barely moved yep also been sideways for over a year yeah to down yeah and i mean i'm trying to draw this these you know descending triangle on this pattern it's something like that mm -hmm. so it's consolidating in there looking for the breakout but just really no nothing to write home about and then you look at btc today we haven't had a move like this since october 1st of last year uh but quite you know this could be the beginning of 
one of these tight <laughs> moves. Yeah, yeah, seem a uh, huge move in Bitcoin today, and that psychological number of forty thousand seems to be big. But you've also said, you know, somewhere in the forty-two range, there seems to be a lot of resistance as well. So forty was the first marker we got to get above, right? And, but but it seems like we've been trending in the right direction uh, here the last week or so. Uh, but then today, wow, huge move in Bitcoin. Well, we got to close above 40, right? We have it right now at 40,600, but if you don't get a close, we close in an hour and 55 minutes. It doesn't mean much in my book. Um, so if it closes above that one thing I will notice on the on chain stuff, I talked about this on our Tuesday broadcast, the whales are just eating right now. I mean, you can just see it in the data. So what that means is the people who already own a lot of Bitcoin are buying a lot more of it. And the people who don't own a lot of it are selling their stuff and the short-term holders are selling. But if you look at what's happening, this kind of thrust that's starting in the market, you know, it's one of these kind of moments. Um, so that's interesting to pay attention to. But what a lot of the people I talk to and follow and dialogue with about this are kind of starting to say, and this is easier to see on a log scale, but they're really calling this period of time really since January of last year as just a sideways consolidation for Bitcoin. And it's actually very similar, oddly enough, if you look at this sideways consolidation and then look at the gold chart, same kind of sideways consolidation happening. Now go mm -hmm. to the copper chart, same type of sideways consolidation happening. So yep. these commodity type of investments seem to be consolidating sideways, albeit Bitcoin's got a lot more volatility in between it. But that's what a lot of the kind of the chartists and theorists that I follow and interact with online and Twitter and whatnot um, are, are really calling this. They're saying like, look, look, this is, this is more like this moment and this moment than it is like this moment coming before these big moves we have in it. Mm. That's one of the theories right now that it's not done. Now, I will say, very interesting. On a day when jobs come out, more inflation, and Bitcoin just rips. And Good gold shit. does nothing. The gold mm -hmm. barely moved today. <laughs> Gold's been holding that 1800 psychological number, though, for well, it feels like maybe a month to six weeks now, which seems important. Yeah, and interesting, you, you could see that because it's like right here, right here, right here, right here. I mean, it's just fighting to keep this area, either stay above it or claim it, but it just can't seem to move on from it, the 1800 mark. Um, so I was excited, I must say, Chris, I will admit, I was excited to see when things were selling off early this morning, that Bitcoin was ripping upwards. <laughs> I think that was a good sign. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we haven't seen that in a while because it, and maybe that's a good sign for the markets because it does seem like Bitcoin has been an early indicator for risk on and risk off. Right. Uh, it definitely sold off before everything else did. And uh, so maybe this is, maybe this is a good omen. And if there's no other stock to teach one fundamental principle of investing is size your bets accordingly, because some days you wake up and you will fall out of bed. Anyone poor Zuck <laughs> lost 200 billion in one day. Um, so you can see this is the Facebook where it closed and then its earnings came out and the market did not like its earnings. I mean, just, it was surprised to the downside and it just, just clobbered it. And the stock sold off. I would easy. love to see the st statistics of like largest market cap losses in one day uh, or quickest market cap losses, you know, most volatility in the largest companies, right? Because that's, that's gotta be up there. You know, yeah. I, when, I, when, when I heard, <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. And I look at my, my quotes and I'm like, that, how is that even possible with a company that large? You know, but same thing with um, with Google. Google was up over 10 percent uh, on their earnings, which, by the way, their their revenues were up like 40 percent. How do you grow revenues in a company as large as Google 
by that kind of number. I mean, that just seems like funny money at that point, right? And yeah. I will say now when you go to Google something, you'll notice the entire first page is ads, right? It used to be right. just like the, the first one or two. Now it's the whole first page. Yeah. So that's how. <laughs> that's how, exactly. And, and then take and, all our data and sell it out all the back doors we all have. Like, I mean, same thing Facebook, right? And, well, the YouTube videos, I mean, there's a bazillion ads on that. Like, I don't know about you and your family, Darren, but like my my family, we the only cable I ever watch is sports. And that's probably only because I don't know how to watch sports somewhere else because I'm sure there's other people out there like this idiot still watching sports on cable, right? But but that's it. I mean, everything else is pretty much YouTube. Uh, for my kids, especially like they, they don't care about anything that's on regular TV. Yeah, no, I, 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 I rarely turn on the regular. The only time I turn on the TV, if there's like, you know, like the 49ers game last week, I watched that. That was the first football game I'd watched all year. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, uh, exactly. I have to Tesla, you know, seemed to find support on that 200 day moving average though. So that's positive. That looks good. But with Facebook and Tesla just getting beat up, it's made it tough for the indexes to do well, right? Because they're just such big parts of the indexes. Um, all look in all, I Elon think I'm, sold. I'm <laughs> look where what? Elon sold. And look where Elon sold. That was probably, yeah. I don't know if he top ticked it, but it was very close to the top. Very close to top. Good, good for like you, Elon. The Federal Reserve presidents top ticked the yeah. market. Yeah, suddenly they found the religion and got got their integrity back. We decided right, to be right ethical at the suddenly. <laughs> yeah, funny how that works. Maybe we should yeah. let them trade it again. That way we can get our markets back. That's right. Well, I think we're going to close it there. Uh, you know, overall neutral to bearish right now. Still too early to call if we're going to turn this one around or if we're going to confirm a downtrend for a while. Um, we'll keep watching lots of interesting things in the market. We'll be back on Tuesday for our on the economy video. Uh, as always have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your time with your family. Uh, a little warmer, at least here in California. I know the rest of the United States is getting hammered right now, but, uh, anyway, have a great weekend and take care. <laughs>